So thank you, Giano. Uh, I hope that uh, my presentation is uh, visible. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, thank you. That's fine. So I am Mohammed Furkan. So this is a common abbreviation in the subcontinent for writing Mohammed anyway. And I was working at IIT Kanpur for my PhD degree. I mostly work on finite elements and uh, CFD and all those computational mechanics things. Recently, I have been working at AMU. So let me start. So I, I have been interested uh, in cross features for quite some time, uh, even so because I started uh, my journey uh, for programming with some C and C++ languages, but that was a very short stint. So I have been curious about cross features for quite some time. So this is one feature as uh, our host mentioned, uh, which C++ people have taken to a great length and somehow Fortran has been lacking in this uh, context. So there are uh, some obvious advantages of using constant expressions or compile time evaluation. Uh, most obvious one is a speed up. So uh, of course, uh, for compile time evaluation, your some of your calculations will be done once and your uh, the computed values will be stored and you ca can be used uh, for each time you run the program. But limitation with this approach is that uh, it's more most of the time not possible to uh, compute much of the work uh, at compile time. Uh, I mean, of course, programs, most of the programs do need some data and evaluate on that. So, I mean, it's, it's not a very huge advantage in terms of speed. Another advantage is that uh, it enforces referential transparency. So since there is no state at compile time, we are forced uh, that our code, which uh, can be evaluated at compile time. So if we are trying to maximize the amount of uh, code, which can be evaluated by the compiler, uh, then uh, we are in a way promoting functional programming. Uh, a mu a, and we are also, we also get some advantages in terms of debugging and proving correctness of program. And of course, th thread safety. So these are all features which, uh, already come with uh, promoting functional programming. But the problem with this approach has been that for quite some, that the support for constant expressions is limited in most of the languages. In fact, uh, we, are, we have been talking about C++ and the uh, designer of C++ himself admitted this long ago in 2010, when he said that uh, in a symposium that uh, languages require constant expressions to be written in an impoverished language with minimal support from type system. This is tedious and error prone. So yes, the C++ has uh, since then in these 13 years or so has improved uh, in enhancing the support for constant expressions. And we hope that Fortran 2 uh, gets its share. So what I Another thing that made me curious about this topic is uh, that if you look at a popular website called Rosetta Code, you will see that there are various examples of uh, constant expressions or compile time evaluation. Uh, so the example they use is computing factorial of number 10. So they, so they ask that uh, how one can compute factorial 10 at compile time using various languages. So one language uh, which uh, has some sub which has good support is C++. So you will find that there are two examples of C++ on Rosetta uh, Code's website, and they use two different styles. So first is template, or I also include it as macro style uh, if you refer to terminology of Lisp languages. So in the template style, you have a structure which has some parameter if we, uh, if I borrow terminology from Fortran and, and the structure is defined such that it takes a parameter and you can define a recursive structure and, uh, 
and if you when you declare that uh, structure for a particular value of parameter so so when you uh, when you define that structure with particular uh, declare that with a particular value of parameter so it kind of due to the definition uh, the, the recursive definition that is it has been defined it evaluates so this thing has been used to great advantage uh, in various libraries uh, i think in boost library or in some other linear algebra libraries for speeding up similar kind of thing is being done on the left side the another approach is uh, to have your functions which are pure functions they they do not depend on state they do not depend on context or global variables so you just have a function in the ma pure mathematical sense and and you just evaluate that function so compiler can very well do that because the function is just a mathematical expression which uh, so if you give all the input parameters to that you can evaluate it unfortunately fortran does not have this support as of now so uh, that functions uh, which can be available we don't have a support that there is a proposal i think for fortran uh, for a next version uh, don't know whether it gets accepted but there is a proposal for simple functions so pure functions they are close closer to getting evaluated at compile time but they are they have some restrictions which do not allow compilers uh, to do such things so a more specific version of uh, compiler of uh, more specific or uh, you know more a purer form of function has been uh, proposed for for tran standard which can be evaluated at, at uh compile time just as you can see in case of c++ on the right side code all right so what about rosetta codes uh, fortran example so to say the least it appears ridiculous as you can see the way uh, this factorial is computed is just by writing numbers from 10 to 2 uh, which is uh, if i uh, dare to say that this is no programming at all you are just calculating the number uh, almost by hand by right typing all the 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 whole expression so this is of course legit and it is um, uh, it should be counted as compile time evaluation but this is useless i mean who is going to use this what is the benefit of having this so is the situation so bad no the answer is no uh, fortran does have some support uh for for uh, uh, such kind of things although the support is limited we don't uh, have support that you can define a function yourself and use it to do some computations at compile time but at least what fortran support supports is that you can define you can define uh uh a structure so there are some default structures and there is there are this uh, uh, implied do loop based uh, array structure so you can define this structure and you can use inbuilt functions in fortran intrinsic functions as we call them to do some useful calculations in fact what makes this example more ridiculous is a paper by uh, by the inventor of fortran john beckus back in 1977 he was promoting um, uh, he was promoting this functional paradigm and saying that how can we uh, move away from the neumann style of neumann style of programming so he was promoting this kind of thing where you have if you have so he gave this example of uh, taking dot dot product of two vectors of course fortran was was much more imperative back then so this code was uh, it could not have been uh, written in fortran back then but later on uh, now i mean it's very easy to convert this uh, this code of this pseudo code from backus into a fortran code so basically you have two vectors and you take first take transpose of them then to each sub vector you apply multiplication operation and then to each sub vector uh, then to all of these 
uh, you apply addition operator and get your dot product. So if we write this uh, example of uh, Bacchus in modern Fortran, so what we can do is we can define his vectors into a matrix. So he was using a matrix, so we can also use a matrix and we can define them at compile time and do some product. Of course, you can directly use dot product as an intrinsic function, but the point here is that that you can compose different intrinsic functions to uh, to make to increase your uh, horizon uh, for computing uh, at compile time. So the second code that I have uh, given here is the obvious. Uh, improvement of the Rosetta code. So you just use array constructor and use product. So that's all. I mean, I don't know why nobody, uh, I mean, why nobody uh, thought about this on Rosetta or I mean, who contributed there can still improve or one of us can do that anyway. So of course, this is not as general as C++ constant expression functions, but that is also a recent addition to C++ and Fortran can get there. But meanwhile, when it Till it gets there, I'll show some contraption, some concoction that uh, I got uh, while doing some, uh, uh, while writing some finite element codes. So one thing which is very common in finite element is defining interpolation function. So the problem is like this. So I'll use this example now on to demonstrate uh, how to compose various functions into uh, a complicated or uh, quite complicated or non-trivial non uh, computation. So what you are given is you are given points x1 to xn and you are given values of a function at those points and you want to find a polynomial through that. So there are various forms. One popular form is Lagrange polynomial. So uh, a common way in which Lagrange polynomials uh, are written is using Lagrangian Lagrange basis functions. These are small li's. So Lagrange basis function into uh, the value of function at the corresponding point and sum them over, you get linear, this interpolation the polynomial. So Lagrange basis, just a quick recap of Lagrange basis. So it is evaluated with this expression. So if you want to evaluate the value of interpolation polynomial at X, what you have to do is you have to uh, use this uh, expression X minus XK and over I, xi minus xk and of course k cannot be equal to i that will create problem in the denominator. Similarly, we are also interested in finding derivatives. So derivative of this function can be written in two, uh, in two expressions that I have shown here, two equivalent expressions, but they uh, differ in a subtle sense. I'll, I'll come to them later that how to program both of these expressions uh, at compile time. Uh, and remember that what, uh, whatever I have been doing at, uh, I propose to do at compile time, it is also valid for doing at uh, run time. It is just composition of functions. So it is more restrictive, but uh, of course, it, if it can do be done at compile time, then it is useful at run time as well. So our task is as follows. So I want to evaluate Li and, L and its derivative at selected M values of X using N, uh, points for interpolation. So I have n point, capital N points, and I want to evaluate value of x at given m value, m points. All right. So before I do that, I have to, uh, I have to first select uh, values of uh, m points. So that can uh, you can just write the value in an array, define an array, and write them. Or what you can do in a more, more elaborate sense is that in uh, FEM, usually these X points are quadrature points for integration. So what I have done here is I have defined an array for uh, different quadrature, uh, Gauss quadrature points. So this is, so you can see XG contains quadrature points for one point rule, two point rule, three point rule. And you can use compile time evaluations to uh, you set values of QI and QF to you can use values of so if you set value of M the number of points that you want to choose and from that 
you can take a slice of this array by defining QI and QF. So, and from that, you can take a slice of the array and use that for further calculations. So I, I have, once I select M points, I have to evaluate this expression on the bottom right. To do that, what I am, uh, I am doing is that this li evaluated uh, li uh, there are n polynomials and they are evaluated at m points so they so we have our answer will be an array of uh, m cross n plus we are taking product uh, from 1 to n so what we do we instead of forming a loop we add an extra dimension so what i will do is i will define x and use spread two times. So one dimension is there and I will spread um, spread function two times to make it three dimensional. And one of the dimension will be uh, absorbed or compressed or folded using the product function. So as you can see that I have these X, XK and XI defined all using spread. We have to take proper care for uh, evaluate, for uh, checking the dimension that which has to be subtracted from what. And based on that, once you get three dimensional array, you compress that into two dimensional array using product. The second thing you can do for derivative is the two expressions. The first expression is very simple. You can use the procedure followed in the uh, for li and for that you can you reuse the values of li's and it can be done. But the problem is that if your points are zero, zero, then your denominator can create a problem and your expression won't run. Uh, for certain values of x and xk so uh, so for that you have to use this longer expression of course when i for i forgot to mention one thing that there is this k is not equal to i to use to uh, build this condition into the code what we can do is we define a mask we use a mask i not equal to j and we use an array so that mask will ensure that it uh, product is not evaluated for k equal to i so when I do product, I use this mask. All these calculations are done uh, on, uh, on parameters and they are most of them are private so that uh, things outside the module don't need them. So the compiler can easily fold them all into just the final expression. By the way, my codes don't work with Intel. I'll just mention I4 compiler. It gets segmentation fault, not even error, but G4 run just works fine. So for evaluating this uh, longer expression for derivative, what we have to do is simply we have to, uh, we will have to increase our dimension by one more because there are two leaps here. So I will get spread uh, to get this expression. So what I will do is I will use a spread and I will use this uh, uh, I need another mask because there are now two conditions that k is not equal to i and k is not equal to j. So I need a more spread and more product. So the expression get complicated and I don't have time to uh, go through it. I mean, you can just find that in the code. And the bottom line is that it can be evaluated fine for any x and xk. All right, we can now compute, we can also compute multidimensional polynomials by using uh, tensor product and tensor product can be evaluated at compile time by just using uh, your, uh, this implied loops, nested implied loops I use and reshape them into multidimensional arrays. So same can be done for derivative. Of course, in derivative, your, you will take derivative one by one. So you take derivative with X and then comma with Y and Z and do tensor products. So I think that's all the, my time is also up in the, there's an expression, this animation of duffing oscillator, point curry section of duffing oscillator, which uh, kind of reminds me of the kind of, of the type of calculation I was doing that is spreading and then folding. So the duffing oscillator, I find it as an analogy, even though, I mean, this is much more complicated thing, the duffing oscillator, but it kind of reminds me of spreading the expressions and then folding them up to evaluate. Thanks, I think I'll stop sharing my screen. Yes. Thank you very much, Maud. <laughs> there is a, a remark from Aaron. 
uh, yes. Marcus, about the, um, that uh, your code then with all the brackets seems to resemble Lisp. Ah, yeah. So I am very much impressed. I mean, I have some impressions from Lisp. I always try to bring more things from Lisp into Fortran. So yeah, they are in inspired, kind of inspired from Lisp. I do use a scheme and I'm very much a fan of Sussman and all. <laughs>